Um, hello, everybody. Um, welcome to SoCal Loopers. Uh, this is our first like, big, broad event, and uh, I guess we're welcoming people in Southern California, in the U.S., in Canada, uh, places in Europe, um, and I think we're even broadcasting to Israel. I know we are. So um, this is quite an event, and, and the bottom line in this is just purely educational. Um, some of us learn better by seeing and hearing than reading documents. And, um, and it's always helpful at, just to hear and learn again. So um, welcome to the meeting on Loop Basics. And so I'll give you the disclaimer up front. Uh, you all understand that this the loop and the DIY loop is a highly experimental and is not approved for therapy. And you take full responsibility for building and running your own system and you do so at your own risk. There, we've said it. So Apple Health, um, well, we've talked about Apple Health before. It's in there. Um, hopefully you guys know what it's what it can be used for. It's actually where uh, Loop's database is, where all the information about carbs and insulin given and everything is stored. So um, if you were to enter things yourself into there, it would affect what Loop thinks is happening. Uh, okay. So in Apple Health, you have two things that you care about. If you guys would open Apple Health and go to the Browse section, if you don't have it already, I would go into your search, and I would find two things. You'd find blood glucose um, and insulin delivery. So both of those. And when you go into each one, so we're going to insulin delivery here, you go down to the bottom, and you should see... Add to favorites. It's already added to mine. You see the star there. Uh, you can add to favorite. What that will do now is if I go back to the summary, little heart on the bottom left, you can see that my favorites are up at the top. Blood glucose and insulin delivery. Those are two useful ones. So um, once you have those there, so you can access them easily, uh, we'll look talk about blood glucose first. So blood glucose, if you come in here, sorry, um, so you go into blood glucose, you drop down to the bottom. I really don't like the way this is laid out in the new health. But you can say show all data, the bottom section there. And you guys should see all of your recent CGM values, the loops writing to health. So those are Tessa's latest ones you can see there. And if you go back far enough, I think three hours or so. Well, there's one. Okay, so you have the... Um, the little like graph looking icon I hear that 94 at 1127. Um, I'm experimenting with something. I have Tessa's contour next uh, meter paired to the app on her phone. And eventually it's a little slower than I'd like, but eventually it writes those values that it syncs from the meter to Apple health. Um, not fast enough that I'd like it. It takes a couple minutes, unfortunately. Um, so I've manually entered these ones that have hearts next to them. I've put those in myself. Um, and then you go back three hours and you start to see the Dexcom logo ones. So Dexcom will write health uh, blood glucose values that are three hours old into um, Apple Health. So it'll overwrite the loop ones and loop does all these other ones. So um, that's what's in there. If you wanna delete one of these, so if I was doing a finger stick like the uh, heart one there, I could click edit, tap edit and hit the minus, or I could just simply swipe to the right and it'll prompt me to delete it and I could delete that value. So if you put the wrong number in, good idea to remove it. Uh, so this is mostly used if you're gonna do a finger stick for any reason. So if you're gonna, if you're in a sensor warm up, which is what was happening at these times, Tessa was getting a new sensor this morning. So you could enter values in here and then loop will see those values as if they were for coming from your Dexcom and it will make predictions and take action for a good 15 minutes or so turning off or on basal, bolusing, whatever, um, and kind of act mostly like normal when that happens. So that's why you would want to put values into here. If you're getting an error or you calibrated and you want to add a couple more dots, I talked about the last three dots sort of helping with the momentum. Um, you may want to add a couple of values in here to kind of level out that line, um, especially if you calibrated. Um, if you did a sensor restart and the values like jump like 30 or 40 points higher than they should have, um, you could, you might want to open loop by the way, when you do that <laughs> before it comes back online. Um, but you could also delete the latest value if you thought it was messing up loop too much. If it's like way up here and 
you calibrate and it's way down here. You could go in here and delete it if you wanted to. Uh, be very careful about deleting things though. This is the information that Loop uses to make all its decisions. It's storing everything here. If you delete things, you'd have to put it back yourself. Um, so Kenny, let, let me get a little more basic on this. Sure. What you're saying is we need to use Apple Health. It's important, yeah. I would use it. But we have to use it? Uh, if you decide to just run scheduled basal during a sensor warm-up, then no. But if you want help doing boluses, because Loop won't have any CGM values, so it won't give you a predicted or recommended bolus. You'll just have to do the carb ratio math on your, on your own. So I think practically speaking, it's probably easier to do a finger stick than to try to figure out Other everything on your that, own. Do you need Apple Health to run Loop? Uh, you do have to, during the setup process, you give Loop access to Apple Health to write data. So you have to have it, and you have to make sure Loop can write to it. Um, other than that, you don't necessarily have to be in here, no. So it's a, it's a critical part of using Loop is yes. to Apple Health. You using Health is not critical. Loop using Health is critical. <laughs> okay. Put it that way. And then all the settings that you give access to, it's all settings? Yeah, everything that Loop asks for, basically, yeah. You want to give it. You just That's say in yes. the, okay. Yeah. Um, insulin delivery. This one's fun. Uh, people forget this one a lot. Uh, so let's say you give a bolus correction because it was a bad site um, or you ran out of insulin. Um, you can go into insulin delivery and you can give yourself a manual. You can like log your manual injection. Um, it's probably the most common use for insulin delivery. So you can come in here and then you can click add data. And it will, by default, set up as a bolus. And you can enter that bolus if you'd like and change the time. Um, it's a little bit funky with the start and end times. Um, yeah, if you make, if you push the end time back, it changes the start time. But if you go make the end time go forward, it doesn't update the start time. It doesn't really matter. It doesn't affect how Loop reads the information, but it's a little quirky to see you see that there. Uh, so you could put in, you know, a half unit bolus, I could do that. And it would affect what Loop sees as active insulin uh, in the system. So you can add that there. Especially if you're correcting and you're like, you're not sure if you didn't get the insulin or maybe you're just sick or maybe you messed up on carbs or something. And so your bolus is not to make up for insulin that you that wasn't getting in, but you're just not sure. So it's safer to enter it in here. Um, I also use this if Tess is on a pump break for a day or two. And so we'll come in here and I'll enter them. I might not enter it for the whole first day if she's gonna make it a multi-day thing. Um, but definitely in the last you know, few hours before we start putting the pod on at night, you know, it's usually when we would do that, I would make sure to enter or go back and look at my night scout if I've man entered them manually there all day instead of in Apple Health. I'd catch up health by adding all the boluses and things. Um, or if she just doesn't want to wear the pod for the rest of the day, that happens, right? It rips off and she's like, oh, I don't want it. Um, she likes to go back to shots for a couple hours. I'll enter the uh, injections into here so that loop is caught up on what's happening. Um, as soon as we put the pod back on, it knows how much insulin is running and everything's safe to start again. So this is really helpful for that. Um, and then what we'll cover later with um, getting basal right and stuff, if you see... I'll just mention it quickly. If you see uh, negative active insulin and your blood sugar is continuing to fall, that means that your basal rate is too high, um, at least sometime in the near past. And so what can happen if you treat that and you go back up, Loop's going to give more insulin to replace the, what it sees as negative. So if you don't want that to happen, especially at night, um, you can come into Apple Health. You can do insulin delivery. You can add a bolus that's equal or greater than that negative amount. And that'll tell Loop, hey, no, there's really more insulin here. Don't don't give me too much more insulin after I treat this low. Um, let's not take questions on that because we'll cover it more next time, but that's the other reason why you would use insulin delivery. The last thing you use insulin delivery for is if you needed to delete a bolus that was uncertain, like we talked about earlier, and it didn't delete out of here on its own. The loop still saw the insulin. Um, even though it didn't wasn't really delivered, you could come in here and delete it on your own. Well, um, that self-correct by it when it goes from uncertain to certain? Yeah, so there's some more logic into Loop in the last uh, few months or something where it does some extra checks to try to verify if a bolus went through after the fact. So it'll initially read as uncertain, and then it'll do some back and forth with a pod. Um, and sometimes it'll say, oh, okay, no, I think it went through, and it'll change the status to certain. 
sometimes it'll stay uncertain and sometimes it will kind of say, oh yeah, it probably didn't go through and it will actually delete the entry for you. So you might go in and look at this pump event, see an uncertain bolus and within another 30 seconds to a minute, find out that it's not there. <laughs> and that's because the loop was able to confirm that in fact the bolus didn't go through, probably because there was another bolus already running or something along those lines. And so then it deletes the entry. So it doesn't count against you in that sense. Thank you everybody. Please stay healthy, stay home, stay six feet apart, uh, wash your hands. <laughs> Thank you everybody.